Before we begin, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to help the channel grow and keep up to date with our latest videos. Welcome to another video by me, Flojo. Today we're going to be looking at the Power Automate Flows actions and we're going to be looking at the condition action. So Microsoft states that the condition identifies which block of actions to execute based on the evaluation of condition input. So what does this actually mean then? Well, what it means is a condition is checked, such as does Flojo contain Joe? Now obviously Flojo does contain Joe, and then it will then move into a yes or no section. Now, as Flojo does contain Joe, it will move into the yes section, and then it will execute actions in that particular section. So, when we first add our condition to our flow, you'll see something that looks like this. Now, what we'll do is we'll set the initial value. So the initial value would be, let's say using Dataverse, it will be a column from Dataverse that you may want to check a value of. Or in our example, we would put Flojo in here. And then in the middle where it says is equal to, it's a drop down. So we would choose contains from there. And then in the third section, which is another choose a value, you would either put a dynamic data, hard coded data or whatever. But in our instance, we're saying does Flojo contain Joe so we would type Joe in here so let's move on to our example then flow Joe contains Joe if that answer is true then we would move into the if yes section and then we would be able to run actions in here however if we change our condition to Joe contains Meg now obviously Joe doesn't contain Meg, we would go into the if no section. And then what we'd do is we would be able to add actions to each of these sections. So let's say we run this condition, Joe contains Meg. If we move into the if yes section, then we would be able to run a set of actions. But obviously because Joe doesn't contain Meg, we would move into the if no section and run a set of actions. Now let's think about this as a Dataverse example. If we pulled a name column from Dataverse instead of Joe, and we say contains Meg, if that record contains Meg, we would move into the yes section, and we would be able to, let's say, modify that record. And we could say, if no, if that record that we're looking at doesn't contain Meg, we could then create a record for Meg to exist. Okay, so we've seen how we can transition to if yes and if no with one condition. Now let's move back to our if yes condition, which is flow Joe contains Joe, but we'll also add an additional condition. So to do this, what we need to do is simply click the add button and then we'll get a new row and then we can add another condition. So you can see at the top, before we begin, there is a select and an or value. And in this instance, I've got and selected. So what this is going to say then is, does Flojo contain Joe? Yes. And does Flojo contain Flo? If Flojo does contain Joe and Flojo does contain Flo, both in separate conditions, then we're gonna move into the if yes column. However, for example, if Flojo contains Joe, but if Flojo didn't contain flow, we would then move into the no condition. Because even if only one of those conditions are no, we will always move into the no condition. So all conditions have to be true for us to move into the if yes section. And we can simply add more conditions using the add button. Now the add button down the bottom will simply add another row. You can then press the little tick and you can then enter your condition. You can also group these as well if you'd like to. But let's take a look at how conditions work on Power Automate. Okay, so we are on Power Automate. I've created a condition flow. I've got a manual trigger for the flow and I'm gonna add a new step and I'm going to add a variable and with this uh, variable, I'm going to set the name uh, to name. I'm going to set the type to string and I'm going to set the name to flow Joe. 
So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a condition. I'm going to set this to the names variable. And I'm going to say is flow Joe containing Joe. So does flow Joe contain Joe? It does. We know it does. So we're expecting to en enter yes. So if I come into here and just write compose and then just quickly type yes and I'll add another compose just for the purpose of this demonstration in the no section and type no. What this should do then is it should say okay so we've got a variable with the name of flojo. Does this name of flojo contain Joe? And if it does, we'll go into the yes, the yes section. If it doesn't, we'll go into the no section. Well, you can see the expression is true. And you can see that the green tick is on the yes section, but there's a X on the right hand no section. So if we open that, it will say that this section has been skipped because obviously our condition um, is true because Flojo does contain Joe. So because that happened, the action in here got run. So it just had an input of yes and an output of yes. But what happens when we then do something more complex like get uh, rows from uh, Dataverse? So let's just um, look at clearing this up. Let's get rid of these composes. And we'll also get rid of the initialized variable. And we'll get rid of the reference. So all we've got now is our condition again. We'll add an action before our condition and we'll use list rows and I'll use a table called cat that I've previously created and I'm going to pull back all of those rows. But what it's going to do is it's going to throw an error because obviously it's going to say hey you could be bringing back thousands of rows. So what I'm going to do for the purpose of this is I'm just going to put four in here. Okay, so that's cleared up our error and we know that we're only going to get four items back. So if I come into here and I choose the name field because I want the name, it's still going to add an apply to each because we have four rows coming back. So we need to cycle through each one of those rows and with doing so each one of those rows are going to contain the name. So. Each time we cycle through the apply to each, it's going to go, okay, what's the name of this particular record that we have now? Does it contain Joe? Well, as these are cat types, I'm expecting there not to be a Joe cat type. So let's change this to ragdoll. So if the name contains the type of ragdoll then we're expecting it to go into yes and if not we're expecting it to go into no. So again what we'll do here is we'll add a, uh, a dataverse section, we'll add a new row, we're going to go into cats again and we'll add a new cat, we'll call it British Short Hair. So if there is a ragdoll cat, we're going to create a new row and add a British short hair cat. If not, we're just going to skip it. So let me run this test. Okay, so we're running our flow now. Okay, so our flow has run and we've pulled the information from the cats table of a total of four rows because we've set that. Now if you haven't, if you don't understand what applied to each is, uh, there is a video on my YouTube channel, um, I'll put it in the description and it will uh, greatly help your understanding of cycling through data, especially back from Dataverse. However, for the purpose of this video, we'll go on to the condition. So, the first item that we got back from our list of rows in their name, it did not contain ragdoll. So then we'll go into the second one, that did not contain ragdoll. We'll go on to the third one, 
that also did not contain ragdoll. So let's actually take a look at the data then. So the first one was Burmese, the second one was Egyptian Mao, the, th the third one was the Mancoon, but the fourth one is ragdoll cat. But if you remember, we only put ragdoll in, but because we use contains, does ragdoll cat contain ragdoll? It does. So now on the fourth one, we go into the yes column and we've add a new row. So as you can see here, this is how you can like cycle through data, respond to that data and update data or add new data and all of that type of stuff that you can do in Dataverse. But you can also do it on third parties or alternatively, if you've just got a list of information that you've curated during your flow, you can also do this to filter the data and respond um, however you want. So let's go back to here and refresh. And now you can see we've got a British short hair in here. So that's how you can use conditions. Essentially, if you're a pro developer, they are if, if uh, statements. You can essentially use conditions to check um, and essentially rule out any issues. That... So if you're a pro dev, you may be thinking, hmm, this sounds like an if statement. And that's exactly what it is. You can use conditions to essentially check if something exists, if something contains something, if something is equal to something, if something is not equal to something, uh, and so on. So if you're in a situation where you want to check if a name exists, or you want to check a date is correct, this is how you can do it. And that is how you use conditions on Power Automate. Thanks for watching another video by me, Flo Joe. If you like the video, don't forget to hit that like button or select a video on your screen right now to continue learning more about the Power Platform.